Anyways, that's about it for this update video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and can't wait to update you on this later down the road and see how our battle with LG turns out. What up, y'all? As some of you might have seen after I set up this tank, every algae and diatom in the seven rivers of the Amazon perchanced on our little speedrun tank. I always wonder how algae even gets into our tanks. Like, it's gotta be magical fairy dust or something. Pretty sus if you ask me. So I started a combination of anti-algae regiments, and look. The difference is night and day. The algae literally pulled a John Cena because I can't see it. Where is it? It's gone. This texture pack is wild. So what we did was decrease lighting hours by one hour a day and on Sundays I take the light to church for a rest day altogether. You remember our trusty toothbrush? We use it to prep the tank to give it a fighting chance against algae and diatoms by initially cleaning and brushing debris off of our hardscape. Hey, if it's good enough for my teeth, it's good enough for this tank. We then placed floating plants such as salvinia and water lettuce to one, provide additional shade to inhibit algae growth and two, to help absorb excess nutrients to starve out the algae. Dang, say no to algae abuse. Floaters grow many times faster than fully submerged plants because they are immersed and can take up atmospheric CO2. At the same time, their roots have perfectly adapted to be amazingly fine and efficient at taking any and all available nutrients in the water column. This water lettuce is getting a little too comfortable up in here and sending its roots straight into the substrate. I'm gonna have to give it a little trim because tapping into all that delicious contrasoil oil will explode their growth rate, and I don't want things to get out of hand. So all of this is in preparation of our final anti-algae strategy. Call it a breathing technique, if you will. Or perhaps a domain expansion. Actually, maybe it's just a summoning jutsu. But in this case, I'm the shrimp sage. That's right, our secret weapon, a mono shrimp, the final piece of the millennium puzzle. They cleaned up real good, such a great job, I'm proud of these boys. They're colorful too. Have you ever seen colorful mono shrimp like this? But of course the job isn't perfect. There's still lingering segments of hydrocado still cursed with algae, and the green hair algae presence is still ever threatening to take over. But man, does this tank look like it's on its own two feet again. There's small little cyclops and other tiny critters moving around in the tank because the water flow isn't very strong. But where there's prey, there's bound to be predators. This is a hydra. They show up where there's weak flow, but not purely stagnant water. As you can probably tell, these look like miniature versions of sea anemone, except they're fully freshwater. They have around five tentacles, all equipped with four types of sting cell nematocysts, like anemone or jellyfish. But the Amano Shrimp's hard exoskeletons are too tough for this small dude to do serious damage. These are super fascinating critters, and perhaps the most interesting thing about them is that they are immortal. They will not die of old age, and unless a disease or something kills them, they're gonna live indefinitely. So of course, scientists in the field of prolonging human life has already taken a huge interest into organisms like this. Anyways, I think it's high time we reward our hard-working Amano Shrimp with some actual food instead of just leaving them the softened algae. I think I dropped in too much food, so now I have the fun and exciting job of taking it all back out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick little update. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to get your hands wet.